You're listening to Your Rivers Are Wrong, the podcast. Good morning, everyone, or afternoon, or evening, or night. Or night. Because <laughs> we deal in time zones here. <laughs> Welcome back <laughs> to Your Rivers Are Wrong, the podcast that me and my co-host do every week. <laughs> Great. I'm one of your hosts, and my name is Merle. And I'm the other co-host. My name is Dante. Yeah. And in this podcast, we tackle the wonderful whimsies of world building, the arts and aesthetics of setting up a setting, telling stories in that setting, all the beautiful stuff, all the nice things. All the nice things. What episode are we on? We're like way past 50. This is like season five. We're, <laughs> way past is a strong word, but we're, uh, we're on Humbly episode past 52. <laughs> and technically we've done two half episodes. So we're up, we're, there's 54 episodes. This oh. is the 54th, which, is quite, a which bit. is quite a bit. Yeah. We're in that weird transition period where we're recording episodes before they yeah. come out. So we're sitting between it's season four and planning. season five. <laughs> the rest of you are hearing this a little bit later. It's good for editing, but <laughs> yeah. it's bad for planning because the numbers get all finicky. <laughs> yep. I'm usually already bad at planning. So if we're like pre-recording anything, my brain just refuses me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, how you been, Dante? How's your week going? <laughs> I've been good. The week's been solid. No personal updates this week, honestly. Uh, I guess we could just say that we completed our yeah. playthrough of Tangled Blessings, which we've been singing high praises of for oh, the like two, three praise. weeks it's now. It's amazing. Which is wonderful. It's so good. I think that game comes out end of April, beginning of May. So it might be out by this episode or a little bit after that. Uh, if you're into Dark Academia, two-player games, just just the weirdest mix of terrible curses and school, um, <laughs> school life. <laughs> and see, if you're a fan of yeah. school... Uh, <laughs> um, you should probably play this. It's very fun. But that's my endorsement. I'm not getting paid for this. I'm just also a really big we fan did great. Game. It's kind of arrogant to say, but we made such a good story. I'm so proud of us. It was very exhilarating. Yeah, we basically made the agreement that we would not publish this game like anywhere on the internet. So we just went like ham, <laughs> yeah, crazy <laughs> uh -huh, <laughs> for sure. We, I was trying to look for the right word, and I settled on crazy because we like no holds barred. Anything goes. Things not okay for <laughs> for yes. public broadcast. We were like, let's tap into this special sort of horror, and we really it enjoyed ourselves, great. and it was great. Yeah. Also, I wanted to bring this up because this is not something that really matters to anybody, but like us, we look great today. We, we look do nice look today. nice today. I'm just gonna say it. Like you, you got your haircut. Looks fantastic. Thank you so much. Super cool. Yes, I did. The reason I'm leading up to this is because. We've already prefaced in our intro that we live in different time zones. Marilla is six hours ahead of me because she yep. lives across the Atlantic Ocean. So when we record, and this is something that newer listeners might be interested in, when we record, one of us is either break of dawn <laughs> or or at dusk. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> right? So last time we recorded episode 51, I think. Oh, no, no, no. It, when we were playing this. Tangled Blessing, oh, yeah. we, were, we were playing over stream on video. I wake up at 5 a.m. in basically my pajamas <laughs> to stream this audio-only podcast. And then Merle comes, like, dressed to the nines <laughs> on the other side of the world. Because I'm, like, halfway by day by then, right? <laughs> you just woke up, literally. Yeah, you're, you're halfway into the day. You're ready. And for me, it's, like, 12 or something. Or what was it? 11? Yeah. You're ready to <laughs> handle whatever you got to handle for your day. And that's great. And I love that for you. <laughs> But I felt like there was a cognitive the mismatch yeah. in me waking up in my jammies <laughs> and you yes. already ready. So today I wanted to kind of match your energy just a little bit, just like, you know, prepare myself and get myself ready for this audio only podcast. And you look sharp, my friend. If only for me, Thank you know, you so much. at least we Thank can so much. talk in the audio about how sharp <laughs> you look. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we look great. And you'll yeah. never know. One day this uh, <laughs> podcast will be video. Not today. today is not that day. <laughs> Today is not that day. <laughs> You'll just have to take our word for it. On the other side of that, too, like yeah. we play D&D &D a lot, which mm -hmm. is for me like late at night when I'm like kind of falling asleep yes, <laughs> if yes. I don't pay attention too much. <laughs> and where you guys are just still vibing mm -hmm. in the afternoon <laughs> and it's like light and stuff. Right. We can distinctly tell what time of day yeah. we exist in by like our windows during the live video stream. For sure. Yep. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> my window's still dark your your room is fully illuminated by the break of day uh and that's that's how our podcast runs and we wouldn't want it any other way would we <laughs> we wouldn't want it any other way yeah. uh, 
Uh, also, you have some life updates. I don't know how much you want to say about it, but you had something amazing happen. Oh, are you talking about the, the thing with Cherry? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Cherry and me, Cherry, the wonderful friend of the podcast, Cherry, with whom we did a guest episode as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Episode 28.5. Yes, yes. She's amazing. <laughs> She's a very great friend of me. And we were starting an art collective to be able to apply for funding here in Holland because we've got some great funding programs. And so you have to basically write a whole application and it's pretty boring. But if you do it well, you might get money for making art, which is great. And last week, we received the notion that we are through to the next round, which means we get a bunch of money to make a final plan. And if our final plan is chosen, we get a lot of money for making art. And it's really great (laughs) and very (laughs) unreal because I don't understand this concept yet because I feel like I'm not ready for (laughs) funding being real instead of just being like a dream on the horizon. The professional art world. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So that was great. That was some good news. Yeah. Fantastic. I feel like it goes very understated on this podcast that you are like, exceptionally (laughs) talented in the arts okay like i'm pretty sure you won an award earlier this year for like writing no no no. i didn't win the award i was in top five for a short story top five perfect that works too (laughs) yeah that's a lot more than other people can say which sounds very fancy (laughs) but but i feel like it goes under i guess that happens (laughs) (laughs) so uh i wanted to uh send you your flowers congratulations uh on the progress that sounds fantastic all the fingers crossed now because it's very scary to write a plan and people pay you to write that plan. So if your plan's bad, I feel like I'm wasting the thousand euro that they're giving me, <laughs> which is <laughs> a lot of pressure. But no, we'll see. no, listen, it's exciting. I think we're going to be like handing that in in May, if I remember correctly. I have to read this better. But <laughs> so that's mm. going to be thrilling, <laughs> I would say. Yeah. Yeah. That's exciting. Very cool. exciting. Any other updates before we jump into so. this? I think so. Not on my end. Okay. Fantastic. I know a bridge for this one because I'm the host in case you forgot about it. Uh, Go for it. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Talking about dramatic character changes and appearances, for instance, (laughs) cutting off a lot of your hair or looking sharp in the morning. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Speaking (laughs) speaking of of a haircut. haircut. (laughs) How fluid. How fluid. I'm always so great at this. Oh, we're so professional. I am your humble host for today, which means that I get to pick the topic that we're going to chat about. Mm-hmm. inspired mm-hmm. by my haircut, I guess, <laughs> or just in general. <laughs> I was thinking a little bit about how sometimes in storylines, there's this specific plot point where characters drastically are changed in a very short time, not just appearance. Sometimes people come back from a war and are scarred. Yes, of course. And the people that thought they knew that character are suddenly in this limbo of, is this the same person? How do I deal with this new version of you? Is this a good change or mm. is this a change that's too drastic in the literal sense, right? This reminds me of like the Mulan scene where people cut off their hair and it's very symbolic and very, you know, I'm a different man now. <laughs> <laughs> the sort of dramatic character change, I would like to call this, can be very much a device for storytelling and a device for sort of moving your character along, either in a good way or in a bad way. So I thought let's, let's have a little chat about it. I find the two sides of it interesting, which is on the one hand, in a lot of animation series or something, you very often see that when people are appearing differently or they have a drastic change in color scheme or something, right? Sure. Then suddenly they're either cursed or, you know, in visual media, you need like a very specific signifier, I guess, mm. and to show it efficiently because you have to draw it like a thousand times. <laughs> how someone has changed or how what is different about them. Whenever someone's cursed or whenever someone is going through a lot, they have like a darker color scheme. And I think that's the very, you know, the most cliche sort of boxed in version of what I want to talk about a little bit. Yeah. So I just want to start by tossing this to you. Do you have something in mind already for dramatic character changes or do you even like them? Do you like it when it happens? Oh, yeah, of course. Dramatic character changes is something that is part of what makes time skips so fun, Mm. right? When you assume that a great deal of time has passed, and this, this is a little bit of a counterpoint to you saying sudden change, because technically it's gradual, but for the audience, it's sudden, of how the character has changed their visual dynamic, changed their attitude, so to speak. Every anime time skip is coming to mind right now. <laughs> if anybody remembers, I think the first one that I really experienced experience was like, in at least in anime, was the Naruto jump from their previous kid self to like a technically a little bit older teen self and they all like grew six inches they all had (laughs) new outfits they all like looked super fresh everybody like kind of grew into uh the trope that they were moving towards in their younger years like some people became more professional looking some people uh became more evil some people kind of leaned more into like their clan's imagery 
which was fantastic. Another one that exists um, that's coming to mind is One Piece. One Piece uh, towards the later half of the season or, or the series, probably actually like 10 years in now that I think about it, uh, because this has been a very long <laughs> running series. <laughs> yeah. 10 years of serialization. Finally, you have the two year time skip. Everybody comes back. And they have like, some of them have like new injuries and it's like, okay, what happened to you when you were gone? Um, Some of them get really, really buff. There's like a robot <laughs> wow. character who's like now twice the size they used to be. And just and everybody just generally ages up and becomes more confident into what they were moving towards, which is so cool. And it gives an opportunity to be like, wait a sec, what happened? Can we talk about what happened? Because that seems really exciting. All these, right. all the characters you've invested so much time into have this drastic change and you want to you know just the way you the same way you keep up with a friend if you see them after 10 years and they look drastically different obviously if you're invested in them you want to know what's changed what's happened what's new in the same way with literary characters yeah so sudden change is super cool i think for sure it also immediately reminded me of like high school reunions did you ever do one of those Oh no, no, no. Well, oh mm, man. I mean, I've seen you're missing out. <laughs> I've seen friends like 5 6 years after. Oh, okay. But not like a formal go back to the school and meet everybody kind of reunion. Mm. No. I've had like one of those, but also our graduation class was really great, so it wasn't like a lot of tension to to like present yourself <laughs> a certain way. I can imagine there's going to be so much pressure if you didn't like your classmates or something. <laughs> but it was really really nice because it's exactly what you just described. 5 years going by in sort of an instant because you haven't thought of them in five years quote unquote suddenly they've changed a lot mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the thing that's so powerful about it is the kind of shock value of it all of a sudden things can change massively and you'll have to kind of retrace your steps how did it come to this <laughs> both in good and bad ways right right the good thing about time skips or what, what time skips are giving a story is the greater contrast between who someone was and who someone is now because the longer time passes, the more, literally, the more time you have to change. If you change a lot during that time, it's very visible if you then compare the before and after, kind of. In terms of, like, anime, right, where, what you were talking about, <laughs> I had to laugh a little bit because in anime, it's so typical to not even let characters change clothes at all. They all look the same all mm -hmm. the time because mm -hmm. it's just so hard to draw or you just need to draw it so much <laughs> that you can't, you can't give them a wardrobe. That's not a thing. Of course, So course. if they change clothes ever... It's got to be a big deal. It's got to mean something, right? <laughs> or in, you know, the superhero transformation right, right. scenes, right? We talked about this a bunch before. It means something that suddenly they wear something different. There's literally a whole like montage sequence about the fact that they change clothes. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think if you kind of go purposefully overboard a little bit in terms of how much mm. you change a character, it instantly becomes a sort of plot point, right? Because people are going to notice it. The other characters will have to deal with it because there's such a big change compared to the previous time. And I think this also happens a lot in the more kind of slice of life, you know, like royal-esque genres sure. where appearance is a very big part of someone's character or identity. Right. Yeah, sudden change is so interesting because it kind of does story backwards, so to speak. Whereas when you gradually see somebody go through events, you can see them gradually change, right? And you know the events leading up to that change. But when you present the change first, you kind of have like a backlog of plot points that you can go back to and reference in terms of like, hey, this actually happened in the past. And my appearance now is indicative of what happened. So the power of, again, the power of time skips to bring it up one more time is that you kind of load your whole character cast with plot points you can pull from for the future. Mm. You kind of pack it all into them, like in their pockets, so they can pull it out whenever you need it. That's interesting. Um, yeah. Which is tremendously potent because whenever you need a character growth moment, you could always just refer to an event that happened in the past that we skipped. <laughs> And and it, it's extra story. It's extra time for story to develop. And it's so interesting for these characters you developed. Also, when we're thinking about like sudden change, uh, sudden change in terms of I'm, I think of like the Dark Knight, I think is a movie. I'm not sure if that's the one with Two-Face, but it, it's the one with the Joker and Two-Face in the same movie by Christopher Nolan. And basically, the character that plays Two-Face is uh, just a prim and proper um, politician, you know, very presentable towards the crowd, kind of wins them over with his charm. But halfway through the movie, he is involved in an accident and half of his face is entirely roasted yeah. off. 
a huge change in his visible appearance that is almost disturbing to look at. And suddenly, the metaphorical two-faced politician is now very literal two-faced, and he loses the power he has to command audiences just simply because of his visage alone. And what that does to his mental and his, his future prospects and what he can do and what he can be changes immediately. Suddenly, his villainous side, which he's hid very well, I guess, his duplicitous side, is very obvious and apparent, and there's really no point in hiding it anymore now that this change has happened to him. So I guess we could talk about how change sometimes is purposeful and sometimes it's incidental. Sometimes you're reacting to a drastic change, like a character suddenly losing an arm, which happens in every Star Wars <laughs> saga and every uh -huh. Marvel series, yep. and you know, or a character losing an eye and suddenly you have to make that integral to your personality and your progress because you're losing something very, very valuable. Mm -hmm. And it's always visible and always in front of you, regardless of who you're interacting with. So, yeah, there's a lot of potency in story when tapping into these things that either force characters to be very different or are loaded up for the future to tell people how people have changed. I think that would also tell us as the readers or uh, watchers a lot about the character's connection to their appearance. If their whole identity is the way they dress, mm -hmm. if that way of dressing suddenly changes either you know purposefully or not right that means that their whole identity has changed perhaps of course we have to figure out what that means kind of and if someone doesn't care about appearance at all and suddenly they look super slick <laughs> sometimes it can be very disconnected as well right as you were talking about you know characters losing arms and stuff it reminded me of a documentary series i think it was on youtube i forgot the name mm. it was very interesting because it was basically a documentary of a guy that that was very very heavily burned by like a super horrible accident he was looking very hard to recognize. Once he started talking, you would understand kind of more how his muscles would work in this new, I guess, form. Oh, wow. For lack of a better term. But it was also awesome because he was like the most positive person in the world, which was very respectable and awesome. But he talked a lot about how suddenly this sort of shell that he's in, <laughs> which is usually, you know, just your own body and, you know, the way your face looks, is suddenly so not what your inside feel like. The disconnect is so big. Right. Interesting. It's almost as if people are reacting to something else because that's so not me, even though I live in it. Right. It's a little bit sad, but he would talk about how kids at his daughter's playground would react sort of in shock or would start crying when they would see his visage and he wouldn't realize that mm. he was it, that he was the sort of reason for that because he just didn't feel connected to the outside that he suddenly had to sort of walk around in, you know? That's a very real real example of course but in terms of storytelling i think once something changes so much that you lose connection over it there's a very interesting weird character dynamic within one character happening and it reminded me too of a very awesome graphic novel that i've read i think a year ago or something and still one of my favorites it's sort of a grim new fairy tale-esque graphic novel by emily carroll and it's called through the woods and one of the stories is two brothers are living somewhere in like a rural area mm -hmm. and one of the brothers is very jealous of his older brother. He feels very much in the in the shadow of his older brother. During a walk in the woods, I think the younger brother, we see the younger brother killing the older brother and leaving him in the forest and coming back. Then two days later or something, the older brother has returned <laughs> and nothing has changed. Literally, the panels of the comic look the same, like the same situations happen, uh. but you constantly see the younger brother in the back looking horrified <laughs> because they know what happened. <laughs> oh, right. There's one sentence that says, it seemed like nothing changed, but I knew this wasn't my brother. Oh. Right? So Dang. it's kind of the negative of what we're talking about, right? Right, right. Where only one person or one perspective knows that it's not right what we're seeing, but everything looks the same. But it's definitely cannot be the same because we know what happened before. Yeah. It's such a good story because that first page is already this panel of it looked like my brother, but I knew he wasn't my brother. And then we see the sort of storyline, you know, rewind a little bit and then we start to understand what's happening. But it's such a cursed, <laughs> cursed sentence. And I think it's really cool. <laughs> yeah. There's something to be said about stories where the change in it is involuntary, right? Where the inside and the outside are not harmonious. You know, um, this is not a sudden change, but when you think of the beast from Beauty and the Beast, oh yeah, this this refined, like rich man, theoretically, has had his reputation ruined simply because he was cursed to look like a, a monster, so nobody can kind of take him seriously or treat him as like a human being. Every werewolf story has the same dynamic, where suddenly you become a monster and you have to convince people that you are otherwise, right? Mm -hmm. 
speaking of fairy tales, if we pull to a D&D campaign of Dimension 20's Never After, which is centered around fairy tales, one of the players plays the frog prince. And this is a theoretical world where the frog falls in love with a woman, becomes a human being. And the story kind of continues after that, where his ability to remain human-like depends on his romantic dynamic with his new wife, with the princess. So as that relationship oh, deteriorates, wow. yeah. he slowly becomes more and more frog-like, <laughs> fearing he'll fully revert into what he used to be. And there's this whole thing where he is struggling with his own self-image that is inherently tied to his romantic connection to somebody else. And it puts a strain on that dynamic. Oh, I love that so much. Where it's like your own ego versus like, what is a healthy relationship with somebody else? And it's super stressful <laughs> the whole campaign, but it's, 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 a very, it's a very great story of like self-actualization. But right, visual change is the fastest way to let people know that something has happened to you, right? Um, you touched earlier on like a change of clothing can indicate so much. And I, I was tempted to make this an entire episode topic on its own, how clothing is so indicative mm. of a character's personality, of how they portray themselves, how they see themselves, their confidence level, any drastic changes, their station in society, and how they fit in with the greater world. Like clothing is one of those things that you could just change on a whim immediately and it instantly changes the perspective of the character and the the kind of full motif of the character so it's a very potent storytelling tool yeah and i think specifically there is also why that disconnect between it if it happens at all fascinates me because it also ties so much into culture and what group you're belonging mm. it's very typical when you're when you're studying at an art school it's a very distinct look that people got going <laughs> It's very ironic because I'm wearing a turtleneck right now and I'm shading other people that wear turtlenecks all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's very f funny. For instance, in some cities in, in Holland, you really see when there's a university and you have like the mm -hmm. students that are living there and then you have all the other people that don't have a distinct look. <laughs> <laughs> By which I mean clothing or appearance is also very much a social thing. It's a communal thing to look similar to your friends because then you feel similar. It's sort of an indicator that you belong or you feel like you belong in the people that look similar to you. Or, you know, there's like a familiar, either literally, you know, family or a found family bond going on because you have the same feel to you. <laughs> right, right. So if that feel is off somehow, it also reminds me of the Critical Role campaign too, right? Where not the, the little goblin girl is very unhappy with that she is a little goblin girl. <laughs> That's her whole arc. <laughs> That's a big part of her character development that she wishes to change it or that she's very that she looks not the way that she feels i really do have to say i like that storyline a lot you can't get out of your own body you know you sort of have to deal with whatever you got if it's done well it's a really nice arc i guess that you can go through as a character mm -hmm. i was literally talking about this with coworkers uh, yesterday where we were talking about oh how often do you dress well like how often do you choose to like be more presentable so to speak and my answer was hey well i only dress well well, I, I don't really need to dress well because I have a uniform at work. So I kind of immediately change out of it once I get there. So if I were to dress up or like change how I look or change my appearance, it would only be experienced by the people like on the bus and the train. And that's it. Right. And so yourself, is it worth it? But yes. Yeah. And that's the question. Would you ever just change specifically for yourself, specifically for your own either self-esteem or confidence or just to wear something that you never get a chance to wear? Like very much the onus of change is on yourself and because the visuals is such a huge aspect of that simply changing your clothing or how you present yourself or how you take care of yourself it's not necessarily for everyone else it's often just for you right yeah so when we sure. when we talk about characters and stories who now suddenly dress different or wear something different or or have these new things all about them or their new appearance very much of that is self-actualization. It's, it's realizing where that character story was headed and then letting them finally click and go for it, you know, and then finally like fully realize themselves. So, yeah, a huge story beat, which is fantastic and so fun to play with. I guess for me, the most important beat in this storyline of changes in appearance is the nuance, right? It reminds me of the sort of typical coming of age where suddenly, you know, a 14 year old girl decides that she's now a gothic person <laughs> her whole wardrobe changes and she wears only black and she wears all the eye makeup mm -hmm. and all the piercings and all the whatever which is totally valid and fine and you should do whatever you want to me the most interesting part of of such an arc is once the nuance starts kicking in right so i had this now i am this where's my sweet spot no matter how drastic 
you will be the one piloting it, right? So the art in this, I think, is finding the nuance, the sweet spot of all those things that you're trying out outwardly and seeing which ones stick and which ones sure. make the best combination that makes you feel most like you, I guess. Yeah. Often the culmination of a character is them realizing how much of this sudden change they want to keep, right? Yeah, like, that's well said. Yeah, Like for every story that involves like werewolves and stuff like that, it's, you always keep a little bit with you, you know? No matter what you result in, whether monster or human, you always keep the parts that are most important, mm -hmm. cling the closest to what you want to hold on to. And that's always so crucial. Yeah, for sure. Very, very good. Great topic. So fun. Yeah. What a, what a great topic. Great. You know what? Great lead up. Great intro leading into the topic. I think we really, that, <laughs> that is professional work right there. Look at that. Professional. Look at us. We <laughs> like matched, we matched the whole concept here. Yeah. We did like a full, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. If only we applied uh, for funding for this, you know, we would have gotten it for sure. Yes. I'm sure. Absolutely. Yeah, next absolutely. time, next time. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, <laughs> tying it back in. <laughs> We round our episodes off with a nice little world building slash storytelling prompt instigated by one of us. In this case, me. <laughs> instigated <laughs> I'm the one. is a good word. Dante, in this case, doesn't know at all what the prompt's going to be, but no, he's going to have to execute it. <laughs> <laughs> For this one, mm -hmm. I think it ties in very nicely. It's maybe even obvious. Of course, we have to talk about a character change. So here's what the prompt is going to be for this episode. I want you to make a character. Mm-hmm that gets the chance of their lifetime and comes back a different person. And no one knows what happens. The chance of a lifetime. Where does it start? Where did they go? Or what did they do? And what, what's the changed version look like? Okay. Well, obviously, I, can't, I don't want to go the Princess Diaries route, which is like <laughs> when the, the kid realizes they're royal and suddenly they have that whole glam session. That's the easy version, yeah. So I'm, try I'm trying to subvert the trope. Also entertaining, but yeah. I still have fun. Okay. Give me like a strong name, like an impressive, imposing name, so to speak. One probably like too old or impressive for like a high schooler. <laughs> like it's, it's a name like you kind of have to, to live into, you know? Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. I know what you're saying though. Do you want like fantasy? Well, what's the vibe here? No, no, no. All, all that's like... in my brain is like Viking names. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> give, give me give me a Viking name, actually. You know what? That might be good for um subversion. Halvar. There you go. Halvar. Halvar. All right. Sure. Okay, let's go. Up for, for grabs. Halvar. Halvar Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's come it's Beautiful. coming in. You know, it it's the break of September. The the air is brisk. The autumn leaves are are gently falling on these the white stone steps of of Bluebell Academy. And everybody's coming back from their summer break. Some people are showing off their new clothes. Some people are showing off like the new haircut. And, you know, all of the football players are coming back. They all got their jackets. A lot of them promoted to varsity just recently. And they're all showing up. But a bunch of those dudes in particular are waiting for a friend they haven't seen in a good long time. Halvar Johnson, star quarterback <laughs> of the... Of the bluebird. Yes. Um, give me an animal. Give me an animal. I need an animal. That's not a bluebird. Bluebell something. I need an animal. Like the for the mascot. Wolves. Of this thing. The bluebell wolves. The quarter star quarterback of the bluebell wolves, Halvar Johnson. Yeah, let's go. And you see his car pull up. He comes from a very rich family. It's, it's a long car and everybody's kind of crowding around waiting to see what star athlete's going to show up as. And as he opens the door, comes out wearing ordinary black slacks pulled high up to his waist, a white button down oh. in, and a pocket protector on the side of his shirt. He's got these new specs that he places on his eyes. Uh, on close inspection, it's not necessarily like prescription. It's just like <laughs> square glasses. Oh, okay. For, for the look. And he's, and he's glasses. Just, and he's toting like a big backpack full of, uh, full of textbooks that fit on his broad back. Um, and he's, got a little, he's a little bit hunched over and he just kind of waddles into school a little bit unassuming, and people are like, oh, I didn't know Halvar had a brother. And they're kind of looking <laughs> around for, you know, their quarterback. But eventually people are like whispering. They're like, wait, wait is a that Halvar? <laughs> Did something, something, what? Hmm. Seems a little less, less of an athlete today. What, what happened? So the, people go through their classes. Everybody's bumping into him, and he's kind of quiet about it. He steps into all of his classes. Even on the first day, he's already very knowledgeable about all these new topics. 
he's clearly read whatever the chat first couple chapters were for that subject and he's nailing all these topics that he would just have never have studied in sophomore year and there's so many cr crazy changes to halvar johnson you know and eventually one of his one of his best friends on the football team one of his after like a week of this one of his best friends comes up to him his give me a letter i needed a letter for this guy's name s s his name is sterling his best friend Sterling, the running back on the football team, uh, he goes over to Hal and he's like, hey, Hal, um, listen, uh, you look a little bit different lately. Did something happen? You OK? You feeling sick? And Hal was like, no, this is just me. This is just who I am now. And then he, uh, <laughs> is that how he talks? Yes. I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah, no, of course he talks. Yes, of course. Halvar talks. Uh, and Sterling's like, hey, yeah, but, uh, you know, um, we got our first practice in two weeks. You, you come, You're coming through, right? You're going to. We're, 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 we got some early games sometime in October and he and that's because that's definitely football season. I, I would know. Uh, <laughs> we're so good at sports, obviously. How far is like, oh, I don't know about that. Maybe I, I don't, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, there's a couple of exams that will be around that time and I really want to focus up. Uh, and Sterling looks worried. He's like, ow, did, did something happen? Are you OK? Like. Like it's like you can talk, yeah, I'm mean, a bro. You can we can talk this through, you know. You we really need you for this coming season. And Hal is like, I don't don't know if that's truly really, we really want to be anymore. Sorry. Ooh. Uh, and Sterling backs up, lifts his hand, and says, "Hey, man, like I'm here, and and I tried, but help you, help us, help us, help you on your own time, I guess." And Sterling leaves. And Halvar has this moment where he's alone in the room. All of his friends have, have kind of pegged him as like a new nerd, so to speak, and have left. And the whole room is quiet and he just kind of sits there on how far reflects over the summer. He dials into a time on the beach where he's hanging out with some friends that he hasn't seen in a long time. And they're kind of from his childhood age and they're all looking at him like, oh, how you've gotten so big, you've gotten so grown. Do you want to hang out and do like, you know, you go, we got some board games in the back you might like. You want to play or like, you know, just spend the summer together? And Hal, during that time, kind of realizes how he's distanced himself from a lot of the things that he really enjoyed growing up. He has a very vivid image of him going through high school and feeling left out at the very beginning, uh, working out to join a football team, kind of get this fame and acclaim that he's earned through the first two years of high school. And in doing that, he's kind of lost who he was growing up. And during the summer, he just spends two months with these guys who bring him back to Earth and remind him, hey, you used to have a lot of fun. Like, what happened? There is this kind of turning point, so to speak, when he arrives in autumn and Halvar to kind of make this a story that wouldn't be a very good book. <laughs> um, <laughs> Halvar would be spending the next few months bouncing between the things that he loves, kind of taking an opportunity to learn different parts of the school, hang out with different people. Every, every week he would be dressed somehow very different and kind of meet the people of that clique or of that group or of that hobby. And it'd be very confusing to everybody who Halvar is in that time. But by senior year, it would dawn on the people around him that Halvar, I guess, going into junior year towards the rest of his high school career becomes very introspective starts to think about who he is, what he loves, what he enjoys, and that certain aspects of him are not necessarily mutually exclusive, that you don't have to be just a jock or just a nerd, that you don't have to have this hobby which excludes you from this hobby. And he experiences what a lot of people go through, that there can be more sides to one person than meets the eye. And to fit into the prompt chance of a lifetime and kind of becoming the person that you really want to be, I kind of want to leave it on the note that not everybody has that realization moment. And sometimes that moment happens much later in life, even after college, to understand exactly what you've been looking for and not have an opportunity to meet that until many years have gone by. So Halvar, in getting this chance of a lifetime, is grateful that it happened early during the formative years of high school. And that's the prop. That's the that prop. That was oh, Halvar. <laughs> That was like some real introspection going on that I wasn't expecting with that, yeah, with that yeah. very trope-worthy high school start of the prompt. <laughs> I, I didn't know where I was going till the end of it. Yeah, that's how prompts work. 
Yeah, I, I wanted to try like a secret backstory stuff somewhere in the middle of that. But, in the, it, you know, maybe the secret was just the friends we made along the way. Yeah, it definitely was. <laughs> Obviously, life changing are the friends we made along the way. It totally makes yeah. sense. I dig yeah, it. Yeah. This was great. This was great. Yeah. I feel like I need to revisit Hal. <laughs> I want to see a timeline of him now, right? I, I want to talk to Hal. I want to see I want to see how he's doing. I want to see what Hal's up to nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> Is How's he still kind quarterbacking? Of check in Who with? knows? You know, he needs a documentary yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Good story. Very well. You did great. <laughs> okay. This was great. Thank you. We're so I, good at prom. I did the best. <laughs> <laughs> and with that said, let's round off this very beautifully chaotic episode of Your Rivers mm-hmm. Are Wrong. Mm-hmm. If you guys, by the way, want to reach out or have any prompts that you think are great right. or that we might be very bad at, also interesting, send them our way. <laughs> we have a Gmail. It's your rivers are wrong at gmail.com. We love to hear from you guys. Also, there's like a lot of you now. There are. It's gradually Isn't growing. Isn't that funky? I sort of realized that because yesterday I was hanging out with friends and they were like, oh yeah, how many listeners do you have? I told them about it and they were like, wait, that's a lot of people. And I was like, oh yeah, I guess you're right. That is a lot of people. That is. I don't think it's, so I don't think it's fully sunk in that sometimes we have triple digit listeners per yeah. week. That's crazy to me. That's a lot of it's people. It's actually beyond me. And very beautiful, because that means that y'all are hanging out with us, and it's still, <laughs> we're doing something gooder. Yeah, of course, of course. If any of these topics of interest to you, you can watch our episodes in literally any order. The yep. first 10 minutes uh, might not make sense, but honestly, they never make sense. So, But <laughs> feel free to enjoy the rest of the episode. And almost 100 topics we've covered since starting this podcast. Yeah. So very, very exciting stuff. We are Thank you so much it. for listening. There's yeah, only yeah, this one yeah. thing that we haven't covered yet. Yeah, there is the one topic we've been kind of putting in the corner for a while. Yeah. Huh. Should we do it next week, maybe? Something about uh, rivers being wrong? Is that a next week sort of thing? Oh, they're wrong. Okay. I'm oh, going to have yeah, to like, yeah, think yeah. on that a bit, they're... though. So oh, let's park okay. it for now. <laughs> park it for now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will revisit, revisit this at some point because it's a very oh, interesting course, subject. Yeah, obviously. It's naturally. literally the title. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but until <Anyway>. then, uh, <laughs> have a wonderful week and goodbye. Yes. Bye now. Thanks for listening to this episode of Your Rivers Are Wrong. If you have any thoughts for topics, prompts, or if you just want to share your thoughts, you can reach us at yourriversarewrong at gmail.com. That's yourriversarewrong at gmail.com. Big thank you goes to Martin's Kelligans for our intro and outro music. And most importantly, thank you for listening. We hope to catch you at our next episode. Have a good one.